to welcome where General Washington's headquarters for tonight. This is his official flag. There's only three in the country. This is one of the three. Blue with 13 embroidered stars. And when Washington pulled into uh, his encampment, he even put that out so all the troops, anyone coming, know that the general is here. So the general is in Woodstown tonight. And uh, anyone out here, come on in. Looks like we have some more troops coming here. There they are. They have masks on, they're dangerous. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi guys, welcome to the Shippers House Museum. Here's a... okay. It's part of the house, was, this is the original part of the house, 1724. Uh, this was added in 1811, two stories that way, the north side. You're in the grand reception room, keeping room behind you, take a look in there. And then through the south side here, uh, this is the oldest tavern in the state of New Jersey, 1669. We moved here from where the corner bar in Woodstown now sits. It's 1726. It's double the size of the house. All this is original fabric, the ceiling, the walls, the floors. So one of the, one of the most original houses south of Princeton. Any questions? Feel free. Okay. John Shivers, you remember that? Taverns. Taverns were a place for people to meet, the churches, the, the local militia, whoever was in charge, whatever militia would have meant here. You would have gotten your mail here, whoever was in the cage bar. And uh, so some very, very important stuff. So like, this is where people were, were, were living in southern West Jersey, and, and they would have, may have never met any other family members. They were on a farm in the middle of nowhere, miles away, and they just know who's in their family. So to come into this tavern, even in passing through to change a horse, to have uh, some porridge, to have a hard cider and ale. Coming here, this was a meeting place. This was almost a bar, a disco. I mean, it could have been many, many things called a public house back in the day. So very, very crude. We have the wagon scoat, um, wainscoting on the bottom. And the wagon scoat is what, how I refer to it is it would have been like the sides of a wagon and laid against the wall, just to protect the wall from, from all the ruckus that would have been going on in this room. People throwing chairs back, a lot of drunken brawls, and they would have had a time where they would have just cut everything off at the end of the night. Because there's two rooms upstairs, two accommodations were in this tavern. Um, one, one was on the very low end, and uh, you would actually sleep on the floor, you know, for, for uh, just a couple pence, you sleep on the floor, you get a burlap, burlap blanket, and uh, very little heat. And then the main room upstairs would have had a, a, a large bed of the day. And uh, there could have been five or six people sleeping in the same bed. And you, you would have met someone new that night. But it uh, been quite cold. But at least you would have been over where the fireplace is. You would have had a little bit of heat. So kind of strange times. But, uh, and, and remember, this was an, these were outposts. These were, these were placed every eight, nine miles. Because your horse really couldn't go that much further. Whether you're on a horse, pulling a wagon. You could change a horse. You could board your horse out back. Initially, this was the back of the tower, would have never had windows. When this dwelling was brought here and made it up with the Samuel Shippers house, they put the front in the back and the windows here to, to make it architecturally similar in the front. And they did, a, they did a wonderful job. But here we are recreating with um, cupboards, corner cupboards, candle molds, tavern tables, uh, Windsor chairs. These chairs were just whatever chairs they could find to put in here. Uh, the lighting, a small settle. Uh, we even have a, a, a visit by Dr. Benjamin Franklin here. He's, he's uh, you know, looking at this key and the kite in the sky. And, and Ben, which is phenomenal here, Ben was uh, hanging out on Broadway and in 1976, the play 1776. And for many years, I don't know, that play may have ran for 10 years, Ben, when they opened the curtain on Broadway, was sitting on the stage so, and he went into some recluse retirement somewhere in antiquity, in an antiquity shop, and uh, he's been in several places, and I found him, I did a restoration on him. So, uh, he's, he's looking a bit better now, but it's, it's good to have the doctor, because he was once in the house back in the 1750s, so it's good to have the doctor back here, and uh, he'll be uh, giving everybody a hello. But uh, we have a very early 30-hour clocks, pre-1700, from England, and again, 
It's in the diary that John Shivers brought a lot of furniture for the day. I mean, a lot. Two couple, couple clocks over, and they put him in his tavern. People who never had seen a clock in their life, they would never know what that mechanism is. It's probably very scary, to, especially when they hear the bell. And people couldn't even tell the time on there. And one-handed clocks, because if you could tell time, you probably didn't know what a minute was. We have no conception of time. time. Queen Anne mirror. Um, and here's the cage bar that's been refurbished, and it was just in, in horrific shape. Uh, when the house was, uh, you know, being restored, this window was inside the wall. Somebody had sheetrocked over it, and now it's been brought back to life, fully restored. Uh, and this, this here was a pass-through. So you, in the other room, which would have been the first room coming into the tavern, you would come in, and you would place your order for food. And you'd have, uh, could have been a Native American, it could have been a slave, and they would have been taking your order, and someone would have been cooking. It's like Horn and Hard Art in Philadelphia in the 1950s. They'll pass your meal through. You would have had a server here, and you would have had someone operating the cage bar. Can the meal, put the meal to the table. And probably would have had about 10 chairs in here. People were a lot smaller. It was a very tight atmosphere. So, a uh, beautiful Welch dresser. And uh, some periodic pewter, what it may have been available in the day. But we have another... Uh, Another tall case clock, British, and uh, again, out of oak, English oak, English brown oak, warm, romantic, English brown oak, single hand again, uh, beautiful dial, lovely little clock, and in England, these were called cottage clocks in the day. So come into the opening room, or the first room of the tower, and uh, let me just get a light here. Um, excuse me for a minute, I'm going to get a light into the, uh, into the hearth so everyone can see the hearth. Simple. So we have an 11 foot wide hearth here and we have uh, herringbone bricks in the back. And uh, traditionally this would have been here a wonderful tiger maple, long Pennsylvania long rifle, but uh, everybody has to have one of these. They're so absolutely so gorgeous. But plaster walls, plaster over the brick on either side. Sometimes uh, you would have found that these would have been exposed brick. But let's start over here. The original front door came with that purchase of the cage bar in Maine with a lot of the architectural accoutrements. Original, original hinge and pintles, okay? Original door. It's, uh, we're not going to see the outside of this door today. Original lock. I have not restored the lock yet, but uh, uh, we still have a few more restorations to do in, uh, around the door. Um, for lack of a better word, call it a molding. It's not quite applied yet, but we're getting there. The door is on. And... Uh, you can see the these are the original uh, floor joists up here, all hand hewn, and, and and at some point somebody actually put up plaster on here, but it would have never been done in the day. And you can see all the nail holes. But look at the sides. This is first um, the, the first technique or the first uh, time of timber frame, the premier time of timber framing. So. And you can tell by the, the width, these are four inches, four and a half inches by nine inch. Massive, massive timbers. So these timbers are all hand hewn with a broad axe. Um, so a lot can be said about you know, the, the size of timber. So when we go to the second tier, which the Shivers house, with the other side of the wall we were just in, the timbers start to shrink. And while we get to the 1813 edition, which um, will be for another time, or the video, um, things get even smaller than Somewhere around 1850, they went into a balloon type construction that was kind of reminiscent, not totally, what we call two by four construction today and uh, really standard stuff. And that's sawmills across the country, everybody adapted to standard. But uh, so these are people using a broad axe and a hewing axe going down, walking down on the, the tree and creating these, uh, you know, these wonderful uh, structures to support the skeleton of this house. So we have a, uh, a wonderful table here. It's actually somewhat of a hutch table. The top tilts up. We have a little set tea table here, again, tilting top. Just a melee of chairs, some pewter objects on the table, but we have full accoutrement of over 75 various uh, original 18th century cast iron cooking utensils here. And in the future, we're gonna offer uh, meals here at the Shivers House. Uh, uh, you know, maybe two or three times a year. So we can maybe accommodate 12, 14 people for, you know, to benefit the, uh, the care and uptake of the, of the property. So um, in the wall behind the hutch, small secret stairway that goes up to the upstairs. 
The stairway is literally this wide, 18 inches wide, and there's a door, but we have the hutch here now. So you have to pull the door and you can walk up inside the wall to get up. So that was to get a quick access if there's some ruckus going on up in the bedrooms at night, if somebody's having a problem. So the owner of the tavern would have gone up there. Remember, a lot of times women ran the taverns because they were found, found to, to keep households much better than men. Men are always out killing things and animals and people back in the day and, and hunting food and, and being farmers and all the things men do, right? And some of that's never changed today, as we know. But the women, particularly, um, you know, if, if a gentleman was running the tavern initially and, and he passed away and his wife was, or, or they would look for a woman who was a widow to come in and, and make her the owner of a tavern or to pay her to be the proprietor of the tavern to take care of it. So women played a crucial role in the maintenance of these kind of, uh, these kind of establishments. So, and uh, she would have always, again, had slaves or, or Native Americans possibly, or possibly children to the lesser extent taking care of this. So you would have come in the front door. This was a fur, Indian fur trading center initially. You would come in and you would, uh, we have, hey guys, we have, we have a little bit of a cat fight here tonight. Sage Franklin has some competition with one of the older members here. But um, anyway, you would come in and you would trade furs here. You would buy furs, trade furs, trade fur coats and things like that. That's how this property started out as an outpost of a tavern to stay at, to change horses and things like that. Someone would be sitting here, maybe the proprietor proprietor may be sitting in the cage bar, may have someone else. And you say, what well, do you want to eat? Yeah, so uh, the, the one meal, we have one meal cooking today, do you want it? And for one price, you could have your drink, your meal, and if you want, you could, you could go upstairs and spend the night. So uh, capability upstairs of maybe 12 individuals, um, that's pretty much standard. So uh, let's see if we have anything else here to look at, but uh, the floors, the floors have been refinished in, in the tavern. They're white plank floors. They were in such god awful shape. Uh, so had to go on to refinishing. Just want to name a few pieces here. This, uh, it's in the diary that uh, John Shivers brought over a bench, and this is a bench uh, from actually taken from the cathedral in Salisbury, England. The actual cathedral there, and it says right here, 1707 is 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 engraved in the woods, 1707, and this was from Salisbury, England. So when they were doing a stylistic change in the Salisbury Cathedral, they sold off all the pews and benches, and this is one of them. So John Shivers, and one of his first treks over before he opened the tavern, brought, him, brought some furniture over. Um, these bu bucolic uh, plate holding racks and the, the hanging corner covered for the pewter, uh, and, and this covered were acquired here in, this, in the southern New Jersey or West Jersey area. And they were, you know, brought into the tavern and in an inventory somewhere around 16, uh, 1668, 1669. So you've had time, he's had time to put some American or co American colonial pieces of furniture in here. And uh, so I think that uh, kind of wraps us up. Um, we hope everybody uh, comes out and sees us for the Salem Yuletide Tour. This is going to be the 4th of December from 1 to 6 p.m. And... Uh, just remember a couple things. You must drive here, so just plan it. I mean, if you've seen some of the other sites in Salem in years past, uh, you may want to bypass a few, but I want you to see them all. So take the entire day. There's plenty of time to see all the sites. We have great churches, great homes on Market Street and some other side streets, Oak Street in, in Salem. But remember, the Shivers House Museum, strictly mass. Don't you know, we don't want, don't want you to waste your time to drive here and think you're going to walk in without a mask. And we have too many people say they're vaccinated and they're not vaccinated. So we don't want to go through that. We don't want anyone to get infected because coming into the, the museum here. So um, there are the rules. And uh, some other things about coming here to the Shivers House Museum. Uh, no food, no drink. Can't say you're not eating or drinking. Nothing in your hand. Nothing comes through the front door and you're not allowed in. And uh, no children under eight, period. Any other children must be attended closely by an adult. We've had too many problems with uh, children sitting on uh, some of our fabric. Some of the fabric in the museum here goes for eight, nine hundred dollars a yard. Um, we've had kids with candy in their mouth and they drop candy, uh, kids holding babies, and we're not going to go for it anymore. So um, have to take a hard line here. We put a lot of time to try to recreate history or not recreate history, but to bring back what was originally here for everyone else. So we just don't want a few to destroy it. So we just have to play by the rules here. So. 
Um, thanks everyone for listening. Greg Perry, the historic preservationist. Um, we hope to see you then and uh, come support a good cause because, you know, we're promoting history. We're not promoting just Shivers House, but we're promoting Salem City, one of the oldest colon English, original English speaking colonies in the new world here um, in West Jersey. So uh, very, very important. And, and, and I'm sure you know, I mean, history is not a top priority um, on a lot of people's agenda today. Too many people have their heads so buried deep in their phones and their Internet. It does mean, doesn't mean anything to them. And hence, the kids don't grow up with any sense of history. So uh, we're trying to make this available, and I'm working with the, the Yuletide Tour, and uh, we hope to see you then. Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist, signing out. Thanks for uh, taking a tour of the, uh, this wonderful dwelling in the candlelight. Hi, Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist. Welcome to the Sign of the Key Tavern. New Jersey's oldest colonial tavern, originally located where Route 40 and 45 intersect in historic Woodstown, New Jersey, where the corner bar now stands. So it's been a bar continuous for a long time. Um, this is the tavern, as I'm sure you've heard in a lot of other videos. Um, this tavern was moved here in 1726. John Shivers, uh, a land mogul, built this, um, given uh, hundreds and hundreds of acres by the King of England. So he built this tavern kind of as a real estate, uh, an outpost. Uh, it was a fur trading center. It was a place you could board your horse, get a quick uh, quick mug of ale or uh, uh, some porridge, and a, uh, or, or you could spend the night. So, I mean, or all, or all three combined. But remember, these taverns were, they were places where, uh, you know, uh, church services were held, whatever de denomination, which there were, there were only a few here. Um, political operatives would be here. Um, the militia, whoever was in charge of that part of the country, would you could have the Tories, the, uh, you could have the colonials here. Um, and it was a place uh, for the, you know, it was a place to meet people because remember, you know, you're a, you're a farmer, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and generally, where are you going to meet people? I mean, it's very, very difficult. So you come here to find the latest news, yeah. The rider coming through once a week, and a pamphleteer stop here. It leaves his pamphlets here, and you come pick one up. Or if you can't read, chances are you can't read anyway. So you'd have some, you'd have a reading at a certain time of the week or several times of the week. Someone who had a an iota of education would come here and read to everybody to know what was happening in the colonies. Especially, I mean, um, you know, a, a, what was this? A four day jaunt into Philadelphia by by really pushing it. It could take more. Um, remember, this was heavily, heavily forested. A squirrel, a squirrel could go from the top of Maine, from Calais, Maine, all the way to Florida and never touch the ground. There were so many trees. And look how we've destroyed it today. Look how we've destroyed it. So, disregard for timber and everything else. So, uh, um, given diaries of uh, John Shivers diaries and, and a few from Samuel Shivers, so we know exactly when he opened this in 1669, what was in here, what, uh, what furniture was in here. Right now, we're displaying this somewhere from 17, or some 1695 to 17, 1669 in that area. Um, that's what we're displaying. So uh, John Shivers was able to accumulate tavern tables, local chairs, um, the set he came, brought over when he first came from England on the ship. Um, pewter cupboards, corner pewter cupboards, uh, other pewter cover over the settee. And John Shivers had a pension for clocks. He was a very wealthy man. He brought these two 30-hour clocks. And remember, the single-hand clocks um, were much cheaper. They were about half price of a, a traditional two-handed clock. So there's no minute hand there. And remember, no one had a conception of what minutes were. They, could, they couldn't even read the time on there. They could just hear the bells. They may not even be able to count. The bloody people were so illiterate and ignorant in this part of the world at that point. So this was a this was a high grade, uh, you know, IT type mechanism that, that they were looking, and it, uh, probably at one point it could have been quite even scary to them. Um, so this was the original cage bar, and uh, as we've said before, this uh, this was this building, the interior, a lot of it was taken. And sold to someone in 1946. We had a, a local woman, woman buy this property, and um, she plumbed it for the first time. She heated it for the first time, and she electrified it for the first time in 1946. And she damn near destroyed it. And and you know, just just a word about local history and local history books. Um, 
We have to remember, somewhere in the 1850s to maybe 1920s, not to 1950s, people wrote books about history. Um, historians were always in intriguing people to the populace. And a lot of times when people wrote history books, they wrote it in the way that they wanted to shed the light on it. And, and a lot of it, history goes way back to that. So uh, they wrote that the, the woman who bought this house was actually doing a restoration, but in fact, she was doing a bastardization on this house, not a restoration of this property, this dwelling. And uh, anyway, she, she banded up through this wonderful cage bar and a lot of the wainscoting in here, a lot of the, 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 uh, the moldings throughout the dwelling and, and sold it to someone in Maine, and uh, a woman in Maine. And I got a phone call, I don't know, seven, eight years ago from someone who said, uh, I have a lot of things in your house, um, the cage bar, yada, yada. He went down the list and he said, you may be interested. He says, uh, and this was the son of the woman. And now this man is 75 years old and he said, I'm dying of cancer. I don't have long to live. Do you want to purchase this? And so I just, uh, I sent him a check for, you know, a few thousand dollars and I had no idea. And for all I know, it could have been a scam, rented a van and um, off to Maine and Surprise, surprise, you had photographs of where the stuff was taken from in the house. So what a great find. But for example, the cage bar was just covered with black mold. It was in, it was in a, a basement, a damp basement, and things were warped and cupped and torted. And uh, so just to restore these objects took a grand amount of time. But nevertheless, it's good to have them home. And uh, I think our candle just went out. Candles, very, the, 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 uh, most costliest commodity here at the sign of the tea cavern, ta sign of the sign of the key tavern, um, the most costly uh, commodity. Um, you can make your own, but still, it took time. It took time from other things. It was very important. So we're a little bit overlit here in the tavern, uh, but you know, even today, uh, what you're seeing here, it, it's it's costly. So when uh, when you have a house tour here, you know, going over four or five hours. Um, I'm burning $300 in candles throughout the dwelling. So it gets kept, you're probably doing three total candle changes. So it gets rather, rather costly. And back then it was dim. It was very dimly lit. And this would have been, in fact, this would have been the back of the tavern. Oh. Thank you. Um, this would have been the back of the tavern and, and there were no windows in the back of the tavern. So when they orientated this to the house, to the Samuel Shivers house in 1726, for Shivers needed more space for his growing family. So his father died, he inherited this tavern. He didn't want to run it anymore. Um, so he had it disassembled by three Native Americans. It was all labeled, timber frame taken apart, and four oxen, they drug it up here on a sled and they reassembled it in a, in a couple of weeks. And it cost him a whole whopping 200 US dollars today. So um, he just, you know, some bartering, some guns, some some furs and some things like that. And he, everyone was happy. So he got, um, you know, he doubled the size of his house essentially. So they put the back in the front and then they put windows top and bottom. Um, you would have never had windows because alcohol, beyond candles, which were very important and very costly, alcohol is what everybody wanted. And remember though, everybody was drinking alcohol. A lot of infants were drinking alcohol. If they weren't drinking milk and they're not nursing and things like that, they're drinking some kind of ale because you couldn't trust the water. The water had disease ridden all through it. So everybody was drinking ale, hard cider, from, from infants to everyone. So who knows if alcoholism ran rapid, who knows the alcohol content, but everybody was drinking some sort of alcohol all the time. And it was essential, otherwise you're gonna be sick all the time. So, uh, so a real key here in the tavern. But nevertheless, um, you didn't have windows because people wanted to break in and steal the alcohol. So not a good thing. You never had wine in the tavern, though, we must say that. But so they put the, the windows in to balance architecturally the house out. And uh, so the, the front door is in the back now, and, and that's fine, and that's fine. And we have a large dividing wall to my left here. And this dividing wall, everyone says, well, geez, why is that wall so thick? You know, the wall is thick for, um, the main reason is there's a little stairway in there. And, and there's a secret door in the back. The hutch is in front of it right now. And you can get up there, it's about 18 inches wide. And uh, you know, you can't eat too much when you're going up there, you'll never fit, you get stuck and you'll die there. But it was a way to get upstairs quickly. The main stairway was right in the front where the front door was, um, it used to be. 
And that, of course, has been taken out with the addition of this dwelling with the, the Shivers House dwelling. Um, so the stairways, because there's a lot of people drank too much by, you know, 9, 10 o'clock when the last call for alcohol, and if the, the owner or the proprietor had to get up there quickly, they'd use this back stairway to do it. So, uh, and, and this is a, uh, reminds me of uh, Philadelphia, the horn and hard arts of the 1950s and uh, 60s. Uh, to pass through. So you would have had somebody um, in the hearth room actually cooking and passing it through, and then you would have had a server here. And again, a Native American or, uh, or a slave possibly, or, or a child of the owner, and taking it and putting it on one of the tables. You'd accommodate maybe 12 diners here at one time. And uh, um, upstairs, you could accommodate uh, 12, maybe 16 people sleeping. You had two, two levels of rooms upstairs. You had one room that for a certain set amount of money, you would uh, just get a burlap blanket and it would have been over this room, with, which is not heated. The other room is heated with the fireplace, the main fireplace, the hearth fireplace, and that would have had a bed in it. But the one room, you would have slept on the floor with a burlap blanket, no pillow, nothing like that. And you know, you could have accommodated eight, nine people in that. The other room had a big bed and you would have paid twice as much to sleep in the bed. And if you slept in the bed, you're sleeping with people you never met before, but you're sleeping with your clothes on totally. Um, and, and a blanket also, so to keep warm. So a little more comfort for, uh, you know, those travelers. So if you had, the, if you had the money, um, they paid, but, uh, so we told you a little bit about the architecture. And again, again, you can see that the, the hand hewn, um, floor rafters here, um, uh, you know, four and a half, five inches wide by nine, nine and a half inches. So it's primary timber framing, and it's a way to date this dwelling. It's a way to date it. Now, I've been throughout the entire circumference of this entire dwelling um, doing a full sympathetic restoration of all the walls, and I've seen the walls, and there was rot, and there was vermin. There was a whole series of stuff going on, but it survived the white oak super strong um you know not furniture grade stuff but this is white oak that resisted uh oh we have sage franklin but it resisted rot but here's the doctor coming up sage you want to come up come on Get up here um but nevertheless it resisted rot and that's why you know it still exists today i knew it was coming because uh and this is a plug uh, a couple years ago we didn't really take off too well but this is sage franklin brush uh, blush this is a a blush wine we had imported from France. And there's a picture of the doctor there. He's yawning in the morning. So, uh, you know, how cute is that? Sage Franklin blush. So very high quality from the Bandau region of uh, the Côte d'Azur in France. But uh, anyway, um, we need a head of pest control here and, and Sage keeps them all under control. So good boy. So uh, right now this tavern is celebrating its 352nd year, 352nd, imagine that, timber, timber lasting for that long, it's absolutely astonishing. And we're here in West Jersey, you know, around Salem and Alloway and Mannington and, and, and over in Cumberland County in Bridgeton, um, Greenwich or Greenwich as they call it, um, and there's a ton of brick homes. And bricks, if properly pointed and, and taken care of, properly baked, are going to last for a long time. But a timber frame house, quite impressive. And, and it makes it so much more important. Absolutely. And sitting here in the oldest tower makes it very important, too. So very few people had known this until the, the, uh, the, uh, the diaries had come out. And, and, but it is mentioned in three hardback books that this was the oldest tower in 1669. Hey, no, Sage. Watch, Sage, no, um, 1669, the Burn Your Whiskers. So he's in the, the pass-through there. Um, but right here we have a nice Welsh, uh, Welsh dresser and uh, Sage, no, hey, come on. A Welsh dresser uh, with some pewter that may have been in the tavern at the time. It wasn't, but I mean, this is reminiscent of what was here. And uh, so nice uh, oak, English oak, English brown oak, very warm and romantic. Um, there was a color paint already on this, this wall. The, the color paint was green. It was a milk paint. And uh, so trying to emulate that color again. And uh, we have plaster walls. And uh, I'm inside, obviously, the cage bar. And uh, over here, this window was encased in sheetrock when the property was acquired. 
and it was actually in the wall. So I'm checking the timber frame. I pulled all the clabbered, all the clabbered's been replaced on this end, which is the south end, and the, the north side, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the east side and, and the south side here. So fixing the degradation, pulling this off, here's a window. So the window has been restored. Um, glass is still there, good shape, all pulled out, and put back in and, and glazed in. So, uh, so this is what, and you would have had pamphlets here. Remember, pamphlets in the day. This was the news center, your mail. You would have had your mail. How many mails did you get? Maybe you got one piece of mail a month or every two or three months, but the mail was here. Mail is even faster then than it is today. Because uh, today we have people, people in the government that are actually destroying mail machines. Um, how the hell is that? In, in the 18th century, you can get a letter to New York in 24 hours to New York City. Today, it probably takes a month, being facetious. It probably takes a week to get to New York City from here in historic Woodstown from the sign of the Key Tavern. So, so look at where we've gone. Franklin set that up. He said, uh, so... Uh, So this is what it will look like, the ambiance, but a little, little too many candles, and, uh, but uh, we need this for uh, museum goers and, uh, you know, to, to help explain. So we're here to, to educate the public and, and for people that don't even know this tavern exists in their neighborhood or in their county or in their South Jersey or West Jersey region. Um, enjoy bringing groups of you know, school kids, seniors through, uh, obviously not in the last year and a half or two, um, but ready to open up again and, and try to become an educational situation here to uh, to help show the gem that they have and, and uh, to help learn their past so they can be better guided for their future. So um, I think we're going to close. And uh, anyway, uh, Greg Perry, the historic preservation, I'm going to sign off. But uh, so don't forget, um, this is just not a promo for the tavern and the Shivers House. But, uh, you know, if, if any groups go by, Feel free to look us up online, the Historic Preservationists, and you can find about the Shivers House Museum. And if you want to bring a group through, and uh, well in advance, three to four months in advance, we need for reservations. So um, thanks for stopping by to Ambiance in New Jersey's oldest colonial tavern. Greg Perry signing off.